what we have here is a grid seed that is a 40 chip see there 10 20 30 40 s crypt my cryptocurrency miner as an s crypt miner it's good for um, mostly litecoin can also do doge coin a couple of altcoins as well and I am now going to explain a few things about this that will be very useful for anyone trying to fix a broken one because I have a broken one and I had to figure this out myself. It's got a few interesting quirks and an interesting power supply design. So, power supply first because if, it if one of yours breaks down it's probably the power supply. <sighs> Here's the bulk of it. Power goes in, power comes out. This whole thing up here, aside from that which I'll get to later, is essentially just a buck converter. But it's not just any old buck converter, it's a fancy one. That tiny part there is a UP1509 a synchronous buck converter controller. Now synchronous that's going to give it very good efficiency at low output voltage and it needs it because these mining chips run at 1.2 volts you can volt mod it if you want to try to squeeze all the performance out I wouldn't recommend it and uh, to get good efficiency at that low output voltage does take a synchronous buck converter 12 volts in and 1.2 volts out if you want to test whether it is working properly, that's actually quite easy to do because it has these three decoupling caps, I assume that's what they're for, which are across the 1.2 volt rail. So all we need to do is stick 12 volts in here, stick a multimeter on one of those. If it reads 1.2 volts, then the buck converter is fine. But there's a second power supply in here. That is a AME8805 and it's a simple linear regulator. It's uh, in this case used to provide a 3.3 volt output and that powers the microcontroller here. And the power for this comes off of the 5 volt rail on this port here. That does mean that if you plug this in to the uh, computer without 12 volt power it still picks up as a valid serial device because the microcontroller of its USB interface draws power from the USB but it won't actually mine obviously and it also leads to the uh, odd little quirk that I'll come up to in a moment and the chip there is an ARM STM32F103RCT6 Make sure you get the right one you need to replace this because there are a couple of variations you need exactly that part number. And uh, that handles all the computer interfacing. It has a built-in USB device interface. This is my broken one which shows an uh, example troubleshooting. I checked the rails on this one. The 1.2 volt was fine. But this 3.3 volt regulator had popped. Took it off, uh, checked it was uh, shorted, to, wasn't shorted on the output, but it was. 3.3 volt went straight to ground. Ended up putting a 2 amps through that rail at 0.9 volts to see what got warm, and it turned out to be the micro, which is going to be a difficult one to fix because even if I can solder a new one on there and I really not good at surface mount. I have no firmware image for the new one. Speaking of firmware, JTAG interface, programming headers. If you need to write a new firmware onto one of these for some reason, like if you replace the microcontroller, that's the pins you'll need. But good luck getting one because the only lead I've found is a 2014 forum post with a link to with purportedly a valid firmware image on a French file locker site with a link that has now expired. So if anyone can get hold of that I would very much like it to try to fix my second one. Now if you buy one of these it will probably come in a pair and there's a reason for this. Note the poles, note the non-poles 
they are designed to be stuck together in pairs and the fan goes on the end. They were sold in pairs, they're designed to be called in pairs, but electrically they are separate. It's perfectly possible to run one on its own and this thing only gets a little bit warm even just with passive air cooling. Right, now for the odd little quirk that I mentioned. Watch this. There's my power supply. Let's give it 12 volts. Nothing happens because of course the status lights are powered off of the 3.3 volt rail and these are completely separate supplies. So that input runs 1.2, that input runs 3.3 and there is, uh, you get the idea. And when idle it is drawing 15 watts, that can't be right can it? 15 watts do nothing. But the reason is that these chips don't have power savings enabled on them when they initialise. They have, when they're first powered up, they have to be initialised and they are initialised by this chip here, the microcontroller, which of course has no power. In fact, power is not enough. It's no good simply putting 5 volts into here. It doesn't do anything. It has to be detected as a USB device by the operating system on your mining controller before it will do its initialisation. Uh, if I plug that in, watch the dial, that's more like it. Drops down to 7 watts, still doing nothing. And that is simply because it has now been detected as a USB serial interface. It's done its setup and the power consumption drops. So, uh, yeah, it's worth bearing that in mind if you're getting some odd readings on trying to figure out power problems. Also note that if I pull the 12 volts out and plug it back in, it goes back up again because of course they've been reset. They lost power when the 12 volts is connected and the, the ARM micro doesn't know this so it can't restart them. This also means that if you are in the middle of mining and you think I'll just pull the 12 volt of power out and plug it back in again then it will no longer work because it won't know to reset those chips. So if you do need to take it out with mining, you have to disconnect the USB interface as well and uh, connect the 12 volt before the USB. There is one convenient concession here. If I just run CG Miner, yeah, you can see running CG Miner does also um, cause it to reinitialize the chips so you're going to just restart your mining software rather than physically disconnect and reconnect. Right, that is everything that I've been able to figure out about this thing and hopefully this information will be of use to anyone trying to fix one. I don't know why you'd want to because they are really no longer economical to run. Uh, there are, are any mining devices economical to run at the moment? The only reason I've got these is that I happen to be producing some power from my solar test, test system and I wanted a place to dump it and do something semi-productive. Uh, when this is running in um, at full, at full S-Crypt mining mode, it draws 30 watts, no 30 watts. It will draw 2.6 amps at 12 volts, fairly steady with occasional spikes as high as 3 amps, but mostly it's just 2.6. I can show you that if this mining software ever finishes initialising, but I don't think it's going to do that in a hurry. Final note, these mining chips, you might think, hmm, these are dual mode ones. They can do SH856 as well as a script. Can I mine Bitcoin on it? No. Firstly, I don't know whether the firmware would let you do that. Secondly, it's completely pointless because they have pathetic performance per watt as SH856 miners. You try to do everything, you do everything poorly. You know how it works. And thirdly, because in SHA256 mode, they draw several times the current as they do in S script mode. And that um, buck converter is already running close to its limits, I think. So all you're going to do if you do try that 
is burn out a MOSFET or something. So, sorry, but S-Crypt is all this thing's designed for and all it will ever do. You can't repurpose it as a SHA-256 miner. All these bits here, don't know what they do. Probably power control, filtering, who knows. Right, in recap, if it doesn't work, supply 12 volts, check power across this decoupling cap. If it's 1.2 volts, the buck converter is good. If it's not, buck converter is your problem. Connect the USB here. You should find this lower pin, uh, this lower pin is 3.3 volts. If it's not 3.3 volts, then you've got a problem with your regulator here. And if the regular's got a problem, it's most likely because something further down the line has uh, failed short, which means either the expensive, well not expensive, the fiddly a microcontroller or one of its decouplers. If it is the microcontroller, then you're screwed. You can take it off and you can solder a new one on and in the event you are somehow able to get a new firmware image those are the pins for programming it in. But where you're going to get that image I don't know. Right, that is everything. All you need to know to hopefully fix a grid seed blade.